Let's look at that problem that you voted off the island. Um, again, this was an old exam problem. It was the very first problem on the exam. And I believe I promised you that your first problem on the exam would look like this. It would be a messy circuit. You'd be asked to rank the bulbs two at a time. Then we'd make a change to the circuit. We'd ask you how that affects some of the bulbs. You're going to have the same problem, different circuit. Now, the way to solve that problem is always to first of all identify what's independent of what. Which branches are independent, having their own connections to both sides of the battery. And then you draw those two branches as if they were the same. I'll call this branch one, and this is branch two. Now, if that were the circuit that you were given, then the current, when it splits right here and comes back together there, would split 50-50. But that's not the circuit that you were given. There were two more bulbs, and they were added as a new path, a new opportunity for flow, like that. Now that's going to make the resistance of this path on the right smaller. I added that in parallel. And so that means that I'm not going to split the current 50-50, but I'm going to give more than half to the easy path. Now we're asked to rank these bulbs, and the first pair that we're asked to compare are A and C. Well, that's simple. C is going to be brighter than A. It's an all versus part argument. The current through C is equal to the current through A plus the current through B. Okay? Now, the next one is the big one. C versus D. That's the one that sets the stage for everything else. If you get this one wrong, the rest of what you're going to do is going to be wrong too. Here, we're comparing the indicator bulb for branch one to the indicator bulb for branch two. All the current through branch one goes through C. All the current through branch two goes through D. So what we're really asking here is, which of those branches is the easiest to get through? Well, the resistance of two is less than the resistance of one. My reasoning? Branch 2 is the same as branch 1, <coughs> except for an extra path with E and F. That means that the current through 2 is going to be greater than the current through 1. And finally, C and D are indicators for their branches. And okay, that would be a perfect answer. Now what I don't want you to do, what I will not give credit for, is a travel log. Oh, branch one is two bulbs in parallel in series with a single bulb, and branch two is uh, two bulbs in parallel with each other and with a series cir uh, circuit of E and F, and then that whole mess is in parallel or series with a single bulb. Essentially, you're just describing what you see out the window of your car, and expecting me, as a grader, to figure out which is less than which. That doesn't work. You have, to, you have to make the argument, they're the same, except, okay? And it's that except that makes all the difference. Okay, the next ones we're uh, doing are E and F. And all you have to say is series. And then we have B and G. Now, B is getting half of the small pizza. 
G is getting less than half of the large pizza. It's a pizza problem. I have to use voltage. So let's use voltage. Um, let me do it over here. I pick a path through B, and that's got to equal 12 volts. I pick a path through G, and that's got to equal 12 volts. Since they're both equal to 12 volts, they're equal to each other. If I'm trying to compare B to G, the first thing I do is compare the other two. I already did that up there. And I said that D was brighter than C. Because D is getting all of this big pizza, and C is getting all of this small pizza. So if D is brighter than C, it's got more volts. So now when I compare B versus G, the inequality has to go the other way. These guys are sharing the 12 volts. If D has taken a really huge share of the 12 volts, that's leaving a very small share for its buddy. Right? It's a zero-sum game. Got to add up to 12. Okay? Now, that means that B will be brighter. Now, the last one, A versus F, can be done two ways. You can do this with current or with voltage. With current, I could say A is equal to B, and B is brighter than G, and G is brighter than F. That work? Or I can use voltage. I can say A plus C is equal to D plus E plus F. Well, E and F are in series, so they're the same voltage. So I can write this as A plus C is equal to D plus two times the voltage across F. And now if I'm comparing A to F, I would compare the other two. I'm going to do that over here. A versus, uh, nope. C versus D. We said that D was brighter than C, and so then the, the other ones that we are comparing are A and twice the voltage of F. The inequality goes the other way. So the voltage across A is greater than twice the voltage across F. Uh, either way I do it, A is brighter than F. Questions on that? Yes. Uh, here in they're still getting repaired. What? <laughs> yes, that is perfect reasoning. That would get full credit. Yep, it looks like hieroglyphics, but fortunately for you, one of the graders is Egyptian. <laughs> okay. So, now once we've ranked all the bulbs, we make a change. We take out bulb G and leave the empty socket behind. Now, What's going to happen to bulbs A, B, and C? Nothing. Nothing. They're on an independent path, parallel across the battery. They don't care. So they stay the same. But I've removed a path. That's got to lower the current through the battery. If these guys don't care, that means that lower current has to be manifest in branch two the current through branch 2 goes down. So what happens to bulb D? Yeah, it's the, uh, it's the indicator for branch 2. If there's less current through branch 2, it gets dimmer. Now, I can't say what happens to bulb F with the current model. It's getting a bigger share of smaller current through branch 2. I have to use the voltage model. The voltage across D plus two times the voltage across F, because they're in series, E and F, has to add up to the 12 volts of the battery. If D gets dimmer, 
F has to get brighter, and E gets brighter. Okay, and again, that, that notation would get full credit. That would be acceptable hieroglyphics. Is it okay for us to just throw an arbitrary voltage in there then? Well, um, I will give you a warning. There are times when you um, can lead yourself astray. Because our model only says, I'm going to change your question a little bit, could I just assume a different current uh, that's less than my original current? Could I put in numbers for the current and say, well, the current through branch two goes down. Let's say it was 10 amps and now it's, I don't know, 8 amps. Well, by putting in numbers, you sometimes get yourself in a situation where you think you know the answer and the model really doesn't give an answer. The model just says the current goes down. It doesn't say it goes down from 10 to 8. So when you um, put numbers in, I would do it just to give yourself, um, to help you see the big picture. And then I'd go back and just say, is it bigger than 6 or less than 6? Is it bigger than half the voltage of the battery or less than half the voltage of the battery? That sort of thing. Only say the things you really can say for sure. Other questions on this problem? Okay, I love problems like that. You're going to have a problem like that on your test. We had a pretest at the end of class on Wednesday. If you'd take that out, please. If you don't have your copy, would you raise your hand and get another copy? six ohm resistor and we're asked uh, how many volts there are across the other resistor now if I'm a voltmeter and uh, this is these are the leads okay I'm this mr. voltmeter and uh, my arms are the leads danger danger will Robinson <laughs> what we're told is that if I put the leads here and here I measure four volts on my tummy okay and if I move this lead over here, that doesn't change the reading on the voltmeter. The voltage difference across a connecting wire is zero because it has no resistance compared to everything else. So here I measure four volts. If I move that here, I measure four volts. If I move that here, I measure four volts. So I'm going to have four volts across that. Now any path from one side of the battery to the other has to add up to the 12 volts of the battery, so that has to be 8 volts. Okay? Now I chose this example very carefully. I chose it in such a way that I could bring up a very important question. Did those 8 volts split at the junction 
in the foreign form? No or heck no? Heck no. Volts don't go anywhere. Volts don't flow. That's the current. The current. The volts, when I say volts, I'm being sloppy. I mean voltage difference or pressure difference from here to here. You'll notice that I have the same volts across these two paths, even though one path is twice as hard. That's because we're not talking about the flow. What we're doing here is we're taking two straws, a skinny one and a fat one, and putting them in my mouth and blowing. The blowing sets up the pressure difference across the straws. The pressure difference is the same across both straws. The battery is pushing the same to get coulombs through both of those straws. But because this is a hard straw, a skinny straw to get air through, I get a trickle through this, I get a gusher through that. In truth, because this is twice as hard, I'm going to get half as much current through this as here. It'll be a, it'd split in a two to one ratio. Now, I can show you that those eight volts don't split because I can change this circuit. If I change that circuit by adding one more resistor, now when I measure the voltages across the boxes, I get 9.6 across that resistor, I get 2.4 across that resistor, and that resistor, and that resistor. Now, when we divide up the 12 volts of the battery, we divide it up amongst things that are in series. That's why we put the blue boxes around things. What's in series with what? And when things are in parallel like this, we found that the equivalent resistance of that box is less than the least resistant path. So that means the resistance of this box has to be less than 2 ohms. Well, less than 2 ohms is going to be less than 4, and so when I divide up the 12 volts of the battery, I get much more than half across this top box, less than half across the bottom box. Now the actual numbers of 2.4 and 9.6, I'll show you where that comes from in just a few moments, okay? Now let's uh, use our clicker and tell me how you answered this question on the pretest. should be 12 volts, 6 volts, and 6 volts. Now if I unscrew this bulb, the voltage across the dark bulb is zero. And sure enough, that's what I get, zero volts. Any path from one side of the battery to the other has to add up to 12, and so that means that the 12 must be across that um, that empty socket, okay? Now, some of you, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, oh, well, when you hooked up the voltmeter, you completed the circuit, and that's when there was 12 volts there. But, you know, if you hadn't, if you'd have left that, that voltmeter home, 
or at least in the other room, there would be no bolts there. Let me see if I can convince you. If I have a simple circuit with a 12 volt battery and three resistors in series, and let's say that those resistors are all equivalent, let's say they're 10 ohms, 10 ohms, 10 ohms. Well, if this is a 4 volt battery, I'm sorry, 12 volt battery, then each of these is going to get the same share of the 12 volts, and it would be 4 volts, 4 volts, 4 volts. And I would have a fairly big current through that circuit. Now, if I replaced this middle resistor with a much bigger resistor, say 10 million ohms, well now this current through the whole circuit is going to reduce to a trickle and by V equals IR the voltage across these resistors are going to be 0 .0000001 and 0 .0000001 and that means the voltage across here is going to be 11.9999998 since this represents almost all of the resistance in the circuit, it gets almost all of the volts of the battery. Now, if I increase that resistance even more by taking the resistor out and leaving the gaping hole behind, essentially making that resistance infinite, well, now the current through the circuit goes to zero. By V equals IR, this gives zero volts. This gets zero volts, and that means here I've got to have the full 12 volts of the battery. And that 12 volts is there whether the voltmeter is in the room or not. Remember, I taught you that it takes about 30,000 volts to throw a spark across one centimeter of dry air. Well, if I make this gap here one centimeter, and I turn this battery into a stronger battery, let's say I've got a dial that I can twist to make it stronger and stronger and stronger, when I get that up to 30,000 volts, I'm going to throw a spark across that gap. The pressure difference is what I mean when I'm talking about voltage. It's the voltage difference or electric pressure difference from this side of the gap to that side of the gap. When that voltage difference gets big enough, it can actually throw current, the spark, through that gap. Okay, you're never going to see that with a 12 volt battery. But uh, with a 30,000 volt battery, you buy those at Costco, they cost only $8 million. <laughs> okay, uh, you can get that to happen. Now, the key is contained in one single word. When we were talking about the voltage model, it turned out to be very simple. What goes up must come down. The 12 volt rise across the battery had to be matched by a 12 volt drop of around any, any loop from one side of the battery to the other. I never said any closed loop, any loop. I have to have a 12 volt drop, okay? If it was 30,000 volts, would the resistors on either side of the gap, would they still be zero? Oh, once I got the spark going through, then by V equals IR, there would be it, it a would voltage be. across them as well. Okay. Now, by throwing a spark, what I've done is I've ionized the air between the, in that gap, and the resistance of that air is not going to be infinite. If we did this experiment in space, where we've got one molecule of, of hydrogen for every cubic centimeter, you could not throw a spark, uh, no matter how big you made that battery. The voltage uh, wouldn't be able to get across. And in space, no one can hear you scream. <laughs> OK? Now, on one of the sample exams, uh, there's this problem here. It uh,
turned out to be a very difficult problem for the class, which makes it an excellent teaching problem. Um, I've got a copy here on the document camera. <coughs> Now, I'd like to work this quickly to so that you can avoid the mistake that most people made when they took this exam. We have a simple circuit looking like circuits we've seen before, with the exception of that nichrome wire. Now, remember the nichrome wire you actually handled in the first tutorial on circuits. Um, you found that um, it got warm. But it didn't melt like if you, if you had taken a regular connecting wire and put it from one side of the battery to the other, that would have melted the, uh, the wire. Nichrome wire has resistance. And the longer the wire, the more resistance it has. Indeed, it's very linear. linear. Twice the length is going to have twice the resistance. Now, we're asked to predict what the voltage would be across bulb A, bulb B, and bulb C when we change the length of nitro. Now, the first one to fill in is bulb B. It's parallel across the battery, so it just doesn't care. It's got 1.5 volts, come heck or high water. The only way you can change that is if you short out the battery. Now, what about bulb C? Well, I know that the voltage across bulb C is equal to the voltage across the nichrome because they're parallel. And so that means whatever I've got across the nichrome, I've got across C. That make sense? And now, to find the voltage across A, I use the fact that the voltage across A plus the voltage across C has to equal the 1.5 volts of the battery. Or I could have said the voltage across A plus the voltage across the nichrome is equal to the 1.5 volts of the battery. Either way. You see that? There's a path from one side of the battery to the other that goes through A and C. So that means that A plus C has to equal the battery. So that means here I've got 1 volt, here I've got 0.9 volt, here I've got 0.86 volt, here I've got 0.83 volts. Because 1 plus 5, I'm sorry, 1 plus 0.5 equals 1.5, 0.9 plus 0.6 equals 1.5, 0.86 plus 0.64 equals 1.5 and 0.83 plus 0.67 equals 1.5. We on the bus? Now here's where it got hard. We change the length of the nichrome from 40 centimeters to three miles long. And when I gave this exam, everyone raised their hand, and when I went to them, they said, how many centimeters in a mile? <laughs> and my answer was, oh, oh, I'm sorry, there's a typo there. It's not three miles of nichrome, it's 30 miles of nichrome. No, no, it's 300 miles of nichrome. No, no, it's 3,000 miles of nichrome. It's big. That's what I meant. Big nichrome. Don't be converting miles to centimeters, okay? Now, before we answer this part B that everyone got wrong, Let's go and answer part C, which everyone got right. If I just take the nichrome out and leave the empty socket behind, the gaping hole, um, the voltage across B is going to be 1.5 volts. The voltage across the battery is going to be 1.5 volts. Now, what can you tell me about the brightness of A compared to the brightness of C? Equal. They're equal, they're in series. And they got out up to 1.5, so that's going to be 0.75 and 0.75. We good with that? 
Let's go back to the hard one. Okay, let's go back to B. Now, the voltage across the battery is going to be 1.5 volts. The voltage across the bulb B is going to be 1.5 volts. When the current has to choose, after it goes through A, the current has to choose between going through bulb C or going through 3,000 miles of nichrome wire. <laughs> what can you tell me about the brightness of bulb C compared to the brightness of bulb A? They're going to be the same. Okay, all the current that goes through A is going to go through C. Maybe one electron named thread is going to go through the nichrome, but I doubt it. Okay? And so that means if A and C are the same brightness, and if they constitute a path from one side of the battery to the other, I have to have 0.75 volts here and 0.75 volts there. In other words, A and C aren't glowing any differently than they were in the last part of the problem. <clears throat> now, what is the voltage across the nitro? <clears throat> Tell your neighbor real quick, what is it? Okay. Now, the answer is 0.75 volts. Because it's in parallel with bulb C. It's got to have the same volts across it that bulb C does. Now, many people got this wrong by saying they were careless with their words. They said, oh, the bigger the resistance, the bigger the share of the 12 of 1.5 volts. Since this is a huge resistance, it gets the full 1.5 volts. Well, that's only true for things in series. And bulb A is not in series with that nichrome. A is in series with the network of the nichrome and C together. And a network that's parallel has resistance less than the least. And so that network's going to have a resistance that is a tiny infinitesimal amount less than the resistance of bulb C. And so in essence, it's the same as A and C in series. Okay? We have another path. The path is so ugly that virtually none of the current chooses to go down. Check that your neighbor's okay with this answer, In the remaining 12 minutes, I'm going to help you solve those uh, homework problems. And I'll just warn you, there will be uh, at least one of these equivalent resistance problems on the exam. Um, you remember equivalent resistance is the single resistor that you could replace your whole stereo with and get the same current through the battery. Okay. No matter how complicated the mess of resistors, what single resistance could you uh, use to replace them? Now, when resistors are in series, the equivalent resistance is just the sum. That's trivial. When resistors are in parallel, we found a rule that only works when the parallel branches are identical. We found that five identical branches in parallel was five times easier than one branch. So we take the resistance of a single branch, we divide by the number of, of paths, okay? Now that only worked if all the paths were identical. 
If they were not identical, we had to find the least common multiple. Now, in the case of a 5 parallel to a 6, we needed to use 30 ohms was the least common uh, multiple. And so we found that we could make a 6 ohm resistor out of 5 30s. Because 5 paths are 5 times easier than 1 path. 30 over 5 is 6. We could make a 5 ohm resistor with 6 30s. Because 6 paths are 6 times easier than 1. That meant that a 5 parallel to a 6 looked like 11 30s in parallel. And that gave us a, an equivalent resistance of 30, the resistance of one path, divided by the number of paths, 11. That gave us a resistance of 2.9 ohms, less than the least, less than the least. Now, if I go back to this uh, example here and ask you to find the equivalent resistance of the current through the battery, um, well, really quick, find the current through the battery with your neighbor. Okay. do, you want to replace this circuit with one single resistor, okay? And to find the current through the battery, we use V equals IR, but we use it globally, where delta V means the battery voltage, I means the current through the battery, and R means the equivalent resistance of the circuit. The equivalent resistance is what we're looking for here. Now, I find the least common multiple, which is 6. Uh, well, first of all, the equivalent resistance has to be less than the least. So that means it's going to be less than 3, right? Okay. So, we make that 3 out of two 6s. Now I've got three 6s in parallel. That's the same as a 2. That's my equivalent resistance. V equals IR means that my current through the battery has to be 6 amps. Okay? 6 amps. Now, I can also use V equals IR locally. And in that case, the delta V is from any point A to any other point B. And the current is the current that flows between those points, and the resistance is the resistance contained between those points. Now, typically in these problems, the first step is to find the current through the battery. Now, once I found the current through the battery, I go back and I look for the current through the rest of the circuit. If I have six amps going through this battery, and it's going to divide between these three paths. Is it going to divide evenly or some other way? Evenly. Yeah, they all look the same, so I'm going to get 2 amps, 2 amps, and 2 amps. But these two sixes are really my three. So it's going to get all the current that went through the two sixes, or 4 amps. If I've got 6 amps there, I'll have 4 amps going through this path, 2 through that path. This path is twice as hard, so it gets half the current as the other path. Does that make sense? Now, we remember we had this uh, example last day. If we have a 1 ohm in parallel with a million ohms, the answer is the equivalent resistance is less than the least, <coughs> less than 1. And the way we understand that is we redraw the circuit. Watch, this is subtle. Ready? One, two, three, go. I did not change the circuit. And now you can see I've got one ohm with an extra path, making the resistance lower, making the flow easier. OK? 
Okay? It's not a good path, but it's an extra path. Now let's go back and look at this, uh, this pretest with a twist. If I look at the resistance contained in each of those boxes, the top box clearly contains four <laughs> ohms. But the bottom box, I have to find the equivalent resistance of. Well, the, the least common multiple is six. I can make a six out of one sixes. A three, I have to use two sixes. Okay, there's my three. And how many sixes to make a two? Three. three. So that circuit in the bottom box looks like this, if I make it all out of sixes. And now I've got one, two, three, four, five, six paths. The resistance is going to be the resistance of one path divided by the number of paths, or one ohm. And that's less than the least. The least uh, path was two ohms. One is less than two. Now, look where I got these numbers. That top box is four times harder to get through than the bottom box. Four ohms versus one ohm. So I have to divide up the 12 volts so that the top box get four times as much voltage as the bottom box. Now think of making orange juice. You put one can of concentrate into the pitcher, and then if you're making it correctly, you put three cups of water into the pitcher. How many cups of stuff are in the pitcher? Four, okay? So if I want to give four parts of voltage to the top box for every one part that I give to the bottom box, what do I divide 12 by? Five. five. And, and 12 divided by 5 is 2.4. And 4 times 2.4 is 9.6. Is it making sense? Is it coming together? Thank you. Okay, we've got three minutes. I'm going to help you with one of your homework problems. One whole problem. That problem there. You should be able to tell me how many volts there are across every single resistor in that circuit. But the first step is always the same. Find the current through the battery. And to do that, I have to find the equivalent resistance, the single resistor that replaces that whole mess. We do this by asking the same questions, the same two questions, over and over. What's in series? Well, the two and the four. The next question is, what's in parallel? Well, the two fours. Do you see how that 10 is not in series with that four? <coughs> Everything that goes through the 10 doesn't have to go through that four. But these guys are in parallel because they're connected by wire on both sides. Now, the two plus the four looks like a six. The four parallel to four looks like a two. So I redraw the circuit. Then I ask the questions again. What's in series? Those guys. What's in parallel? Those guys. Why didn't I choose to make these three in parallel? Because of that guy right there. Yeah. These guys are in parallel because I've got wire on both sides. Now, the 10 and the 2, that's easy to do. The 12 and the 6, I've got to make them all look the same. So now I've got three 12s in parallel. Three twelves look like a four. And now I ask what's in series, the eight and the four, what's in parallel, the twelve and the twelve, and there I go. I got three amps, V equals IR, going through that battery. Now I go back to the original circuit and I ask myself at every branching point, how does it split, 50-50 or some other way? When it splits here, it comes back together there. This all looks like 12, and this all looks like 12. Yeah. So that splits 50-50. When it gets to here, it splits between a hard path and an easy path. And this is twice as hard, so it splits there two to one. 
Now, at this point, I can ask you, um, how many volts across that resistor? Well, the current that goes through that resistor is this plus this, or 1.5. V equals IR. 1.5 times 8 is 12 volts. If I look at how many volts there are across this one, it would be V equals IR, half times 12, 6 volts. 6 plus 12 equals 18. Likewise here, I've got 1.5 amps, 10 ohms, that's 15 volts. Here, I'm going to have 4 ohms, 3 quarters of an amp, that's going to be 3 volts. 15 plus 3 is 18. Any path that I choose, that's going to be 2 volts, 4 volts, 12 volts. 2 plus 4 plus 12, 18. Any path. We've run out of time, people. Good luck on your homework. Wow.